There'll be an organization where there's a leader there. And the message the leader is communicating, although they wouldn't say it in so many words, is I'm the one that makes this extraordinary. Mm. And if I weren't here, it wouldn't exist like this. It's just such an interesting version of insecurity. Mm. Such an interesting version of insecurity. Yeah. Like, why would you need to do that? I will tell people all the time, I'm never the smartest person in the room, even if I go into a room by myself. <laughs> We're filming right now. Uh-oh, then we better say something. <laughs> Change is coming today. I don't know what's gonna happen to you, but I know uh, by the time we get to the end of this day, you're gonna be a little bit different and God wants to be a part of that. So, change starts now. We're looking together at 24 different character strengths because the main thing that God gets out of your life is the person that you become. And I wanted to talk to Nancy about this one. I knew this would be one of your signature strengths. I hope you have found out what your signature strengths are. Uh, and this one is leadership. So I'll tell you the way that uh, Martin Seligman and Chris Peterson define leadership. And then I'd love to get your response to it. Um, and also talk about like, does everybody need to be a leader? I was, uh, got feedback from a parent recently. I was thinking about parents and leadership. He's been working on character with his kids and had them do chores. And they have a little boy who is grumpy about it. And so the dad said, um, manual labor is good to develop character. And his kid said, character makes me angry. <laughs> um, and as leaders always face resistance. And if we, didn't, if we didn't resist, we wouldn't need to have anybody to be a leader. But this is what they say about it. Leadership is encouraging a group of which one's a member to get things done and at the same time, maintain good relationships within that group, organizing group activities, and seeing that things uh, happen. And at its essence, they say it's positively influencing others. I like that. I like the definition. It's um, simple. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron Johnson years ago gave me a definition that I carried around with me for years that I just love. It's creating a way for people to contribute to make something extraordinary happen. Mm -hmm. And it really is the power of the group. And the leader functions as the orchestra leader, uh, but like it picture. really is about bringing the best out of each member and then orchestrating it into something exponentially more than could ever happen if everybody was working on their own. And you know, when, we, when we're talking these days about character, how do you think about using leadership, one of your character strengths, to develop your own character or grow your own character? Well, probably in the same way all of these traits are capable of doing. You know, any of us stepping into any of our strengths, um, if you're paying attention, what you're going to notice is the ways in which you lack, um, the ways in which your character is not yet fully formed. And if you want to lean into being better at the character strengths that you're already strong in, you will take very seriously that internal conversation and sometimes external conversation of people giving you feedback to say, um, this isn't as strong as it should be. Mm. Um, you're cutting corners. You're representing your work bigger than what it really was. You're taking credit for other people's stuff. And the more I can be free of those things, mm. the stronger, in this case, my leadership will be, the stronger my zeal will be, the stronger any of the, the transcendence will be or yeah. the spirituality. One of the interesting dynamics that they talk about with these gifts is um, uh, we're all aware we can underuse them. So I'm, I don't bring enough courage yeah. or I don't bring enough hope. But uh, they say an equal problem is overuse. Yes. So for any particular character strength, you can overuse it. That's especially interesting, I think, about when you think about leadership, leadership and people yes. who say, I can't not lead. Mm -hmm. And what does... What, what does leadership overuse look like? Well, How do you battle that? And even underuse, let's start there. Like okay. I've got a board um, that's somewhat intimidating. Like they're really, really good leaders. And I often feel inadequate. Names will be submitted upon written totally requests. Inadequate. And they're not doing it to me just by nature of their accomplishments and their maturity and leadership. I will often catch myself um, shrinking a bit mm. and have to say, uh, I'm not them. That's not my call to be them. I need to show up fully mm. with me. Overfunctioning really gets to um, the inability to delegate and trust that other people uh. can do it and not just do it. Like I, I'm leading a small team right now and 
every single one of them does things not only better than me, they do things I am not capable of doing. And I delight in that. I don't feel threatened by it. I feel like, can you even imagine what's next and what's around the corner because of their giftedness? So part of it is um, stepping back and delegating and letting them shine and come together. And then part of it is not becoming a bottleneck in the organization, mm -hmm. which um, probably has the biggest capacity to slow things down when everything has to go through me or I've got to keep the lid on it. So if I over function over time, people are going to under other people are going to under function. What do you love about leadership? What is it about yeah. leadership when you're doing it or when you watch somebody else do it? Because I know this is true. Yeah. That just makes you come alive and vibrate. I think it's the doing it together. Mm. It's the holy cow <laughs> on my team. What Toby just said. I couldn't say if he had a gun to my head. Mm -hmm. And what Gary brings to the team, he brings it so much extraordinarily stronger than me. And Veronica has this amazing capacity to make connections. And it's like what we're getting to do together is so wondrous. I don't know that I've ever thought about this until you were saying that right now, but it's almost like I'll think of leadership as meaning if you're a leader, you got to be believe deeply in, in yourself. But you're actually saying, no, I believe deeply in the other and people. A little bit more, are, just a little bit more. You know, are on the yeah. team that I'm leading yes. that I see the thing in them Absolutely. that they uniquely have to contribute. And yeah. that's what I believe in oh. rather than my own gifts. Believe in and am a little bit in awe of and like mm. kind of slack jaw, oh. like, wow, wow, wow. And then to watch the interplay. So not only do these three people bring these strengths I just mentioned, and I'm just scratching the surface, but then to watch them um, integrate with each other and make each other better. So something exponential is happening. It's mathematics. It's instead of just addition, something exponential is happening. But why is it? It seems like we both know this kind of, there'll be an organization where there's a leader there and the message the leader is communicating, although they wouldn't say it in so many words is, I'm the one that makes this extraordinary. Mm. And if I weren't here, it wouldn't exist like this. It's just such an interesting version of insecurity. Mm. Such an interesting version of insecurity. Yeah. Like, why would you need to do that? I will tell people all the time, I'm never the smartest person in the room, even if I go into a room by myself. Like, <laughs> why do I need to think I'm the smartest person in the room instead yeah. of to be staggered by the possibility of what is possible if all of us are working together? But I do think it's a form of insecurity. And even pride, I think, is basically a form of insecurity. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. I could be wrong. So, so um, one last thought, because part of what I love doing here is just helping people to think about what do I actually do today? How do I find God today? Speak to the person who's listening to this and they don't think they're a leader. Oh. And they, when they hear that word, it's intimidating to them or they feel inadequate or a failure. What can they do today around that word that can help them find God and move towards exercising dominion? Yeah, and maybe in the same way, it may never rate rise to your top five in this particular framework mm -hmm. and character, that's okay. Um, how might I get better at it? I think there are so many realms in your life in which leadership is required. Parenting is one of them for yeah. sure. You just can't, you're not capable of good parenting unless you embrace leadership at some level. And even on a team, you do not have to be the leader of the team to exercise great leadership. No, you need to lean in and contribute and um, encourage somebody else that's great leadership to call out the best in somebody else to admit you made a mistake hmm. that's great leadership hmm. um, and to believe that something more is possible if you exercise dominion in any of those areas in your life so you can do that change is coming today thank you you're welcome Tim, thanks for joining us. Before you leave, you can subscribe to this channel or like this video or comment on the video. We love to read those comments. We read them every day, so we'd love to hear from you there. If you'd like to receive the emails that go along with each video, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash subscribe. Or if you have a prayer request, we would love to pray for you. You can text that request 
to 855-888-0444. See you next time.